Alright guys, welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Mr. Unreal End Gaming. What's up, man? Welcome back. It's time to inject some Vegeta in our blood, kids. Yeah, yeah. No lies, love. Just, <laughs> just, some, just some Vegeta fanboyism. So today, we're going to be talking about... Today's discussion is about some of the events that took place in Chapter 59, uh, the recent uh, Dragon Ball Super manga chapter. And we're going to talk about it more Vegeta. Uh, Vegeta, if you kind of assess what happened between... UI Goku's fight with Moro, and vice versa, and some of the events that took place prior to their fight, leading up to that specific fight, uh, seeing how Goku performed in his fight against Moro, and you think about Vegeta's training on Planet Yardrad, I know immediately, immediately, all Vegeta technically has to do now is come back to Earth, go up against Moro, and perform better than Goku did. Well, I miss. And Alex, how is that possible, right? How is he gonna come back to Earth and outperform Ultra Instinct Goku. Well, it's ultra. It's the sign of Ultra Instinct, right? So it's not the true Ultra Instinct. That's one. And two, I think one of the good things about the manga is that Ultra Instinct sign in the manga doesn't really have the same exact weakness as uh, Ultra Instinct Omen in the anime. Because in, in the anime, you had that lack of offensive prowess, essentially, like when he was fighting Kefla, right? But in the in the manga, it's more so just stamina. You know, it's it's an it's the form is unstable, right? So it's just the doorway into achieving the true Ultra Instinct, right? But the point is, Vegeta comes back, comes back to Earth. All he has to do is, even if he's just as strong as Goku, all he has to do is last longer than Goku. Essentially, what I'm saying is that that, that this method of training that he's that he's been learning, that he's been using with uh, Paibara on Planet Yardrad, spirit control, things of that nature, it's a massive callback to when Goku first tapped into Ultra Instinct in the Terminal Power in the manga, and you know Roshi's talking about, do you live, you know, do you learn well, play well, and all the, and move well, and all this other stuff, and then we we kind of have this panel where you know it references all of Goku's previous masters, right? So for example, I mean the the, the general consensus is that. The panel with King Kai basically states if you want to be the best in the universe, then you got to train not just your body, but also your spirit. And the same methodology kind of applies to, you know, Mr. Popo and Kami and then uh, Korn as well. Too much wasted movement that runs, you know, uh, that's why you run out of breath quickly. Uh, be as tranquil as the heavens and as quick as a bolt from the blue, so on and so forth. And Roshi kind of, he describes his technique as him just clearing his mind. Hence why he puts a blindfold on and stuff like that when he's fighting the girls. So he doesn't get distracted by looking at them. And then when he's fighting Jiren, he just, he clears his mind. Goku automatically assumes that it's the same exact thing. But we find out that in Goku's training with Maris, that Maris pretty much assesses that um, Ultra Instinct in and of itself, it's not so much about you emptying, uh, emptying, emptying your mind. For the most part, uh, he kind of describes it as um, emotions, right? Being able to kind of like have self-control uh, self control in the jarring, in the face of like a crisis, in the shock of a crisis, like how your your body and how your emotions react to that specific crisis, right, right, and right. having the self-control to kind of maintain that, having, having that level of self-control, such as Ultra Instinct. So uh, verbatim, they kind of talk about their emotions while he's fighting with Goku, while he's training with Goku, and he says, rage, grief, joy, those strong emotions can translate to prodigious power, just like your Super Saiyan transformation, and Goku says, yes, that one's triggered by rage. But Maris then goes on to say that, but the technique that you are after is the is the opposite. He says that it will activate when you achieve self-control in the face of a jarring shock to your emotions. Such is Ultra Instinct. And if you go back to some of the statements that Whis makes about the technique itself as well, um, you know, he says, Whis actually mentions to Goku, and because Goku actually remembers some of the things that Whis told him, and he says, don't allow your mind to control your movement. Every part of your body must judge and act on its own. And I can, looking back at this stuff now, I can actually understand why the fandom automatically assumes that it means emptying your mind, clearing your head completely, because Goku sees Roshi do something similar, right? Beerus sees R Roshi do something similar, same thing with Whis. And at first, Beerus is like, dude, what the hell's going on? Like, this guy's... Is, those movements, they look similar to that technique, and we says like, it's similar, but it's a far cry from the actual thing. And then we get more kind of clar clarification as to what that is exactly, while Goku is training with Maris. Now, what does this mean for Vegeta? Technically, everything that Vegeta is doing right now, in my opinion, right, based on what we saw against Goku and Moro in that fight, Vegeta is kind of technically learning to wield that power, that form, that technique of the gods. And it's almost as if he doesn't even know it. 
the only thing in my opinion that's holding him back is his actual attitude right this idea that he has to surpass Kakarot. he's always thinking about goku right he's always thinking about not letting goku get the best of him and sometimes he has some like kind of like righteous morals as well but vegeta has never really done the same thing goku has in the terminal power for example when after he first achieved ultra instinct sign after jiren you know powers up goku doesn't like he's not scared the same way he was when he fought moral in the recent chapter right he kind of like just sits there calm and relaxed and he actually tells jiren this isn't easy you know because jiren was like you're looking awfully relaxed and then goku's like yeah well it's not like this is easy or anything so it's not about being calm it's not about emptying your mind all this other garbage that a lot of like i guess for lack of a better term purists have kind of criticized ultra instinct element in the manga especially for being nothing more than just another super saiyan transformation which i will cover in another video and the scary part about that is that goku had two months of irl time right to train with maris in the row set which translated to six months before he got he was able to kind of like use the technique at will you can argue that he was able to use it around the four month mark but ultimately the point is that he learned how to tap into that power at will training with maris in the row set specifically he had six months of training with maris vegeta's only had about two months and he's still currently on planet yarger as we speak based on chapter 58 and 59 alone and the statements that we've seen especially where moro actually prepares to go to earth with Vegeta in mind, and before you take the floor, I'll read the panel to you, alright? This is when Vegeta's been, uh, where he asked uh, for Paibara to, uh, to teach him the technique and all this other junk. Got it. Yep. Yeah, Moro tells him, uh, Moro says it, I see, he truly has grown more powerful, that one called Vegeta, right? And then he says, um, what a delightful development, in that case I shall stock up and reach the outer limits of my power before traveling to Earth. And then the following panel says, assuming I am even constrained by such limits. And then he com and then he uh, commands Sagamo to find more planets for him. And then we get that panel where it shows like the planets and the galaxy and stuff. And he's like absorbing a bunch of planets. You can actually see uh, the stuff on screen. And it actually says the narrator states, leading up to his attack on Earth, Moro continued to devour planets throughout the galaxy. Meanwhile, Goku and Vegeta's training also progressed until at last two months had passed. So your thoughts, man? I mean, j just based on that, right now as we cover this topic right now. Theoretically, Vegeta's actually stronger I than Goku. I, I honestly think he's ready. I mean, people want to sleep on, on the fact that, like, Vegeta can possess the necessary skill set to defeat him, of course. I right. mean, you can argue UI if it was allowed to maintain its stamina and Goku for, uh, to be allowed to fight at full power throughout the entire duration of that battle, then yeah, Goku would, you know, I, you would argue be able to defeat Moro no problem because there is no stamina to worry about because you can maintain the, those high levels of, uh, of speed without the constraint on your body but right. what's even more interesting is the fact that moro acknowledges that that one known as vegeta has also gotten stronger and it's very delightful and he's even willing to you know stack up on his own power by even assuming that he you know he isn't constrained by such limits because there, there possibly isn't a limit to his power but for that to happen it's like vegeta's gonna have to tap into some sort of like i think power that allows him to maintain the stamina that he has to try to outbeat Moro and I think by besting him via techniques is the only way he could do it. I don't see him honestly being stronger than UI. It, it is, if you go back and you look at the difference between Super Saiyan Blue and Ultra Instinct when it was achieved during the Tournament of Power, what a difference, right? Like what a jump in power to where you fought Jiren during that time in, in the anime and the manga mm -hmm. and you weren't able to stand a chance until you had to reach that level of power to where you had somewhat of a fighting chance to survive and for him to just be with Pybrara to to leap so, you know so much ahead of Goku uh, especially with timing because Vegeta's been on planet Yardrat for like two months and Vegeta's been training with Maris for six inside the room with Goku. Spirit in Time yeah, yeah. The only way I can see him beating Moro is by negating his magic by negating everything he can do and using pure skill to outmatch him I, I think that with speed with Goku being able to utilize his speed and really you know nail Moro in it was shown that yeah you know with that with those levels of, uh, of power you can be able to actually put a dent in such a person but I don't think Vegeta is going to have that level of speed I don't see him achieving that level of power per se to where he's above Omen maybe he's around that same level or, or caliber because I mean, it was improving that Jiren had UI, but he was still comparable. So I, I can I can make the assessment and say that sure, he could be around that that kind of power if 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 needed. But I think the the only method for him to counter or negate the way Moro is going to be fighting him would be through skill set and magic. I think by using 
and I don't want to say instant transmission because instantaneous movement movement was also proved to be uh, proven to be uh, ineffective against Moro in this chapter because Goku did it a few times and it's like Moro kind of already knew. Yeah, we well, don't need so it. So it's like like how far can that really get you? So I, I don't want to say it's, it's going to be gigantism because it's just a little cliche to see a yeah, giant that's, Vegeta. That's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> because how else is a giant theoretical Vegeta with such power able to catch his opponent when you're that big and you're that slow? Yeah. So it's gonna it's got to be something like I I feel like. This kind of harpens back to uh, the trio of the danger. Do you remember when they opened up or created those barriers that prevented them from being poisoned? It's got to be something similar to that where he prevents his key from being taken or at yeah. least his key is able to replenish itself, you know, while it's being drained by Moro. Because I'm telling you right now, I think Vegeta is going to get the upper hand on him. But in some way, shape, or form, it's probably not going to be something to where Vegeta is going to acknowledge Moro as being the target. Whereas in the distance, you're going to have 7 3 come in clutch with that absorption. And perhaps maybe this technique or, or whatever the case may be requires strict concentration on one's opponent for it, for it to work, not knowing the fact that, you know, elsewhere, your Genki's still being taken by another person that has this uh, similar ability. So it's, it, it's really a fight of tactics right now because. It's like UI, UI, even with that level of power, we saw how fast Goku was and the precision and the velocity which he fought Moro in was insane. Um, you can also argue that Mor uh, that Goku had the upper hand early on, which he kind of did because Moro was kind of shown getting pushed back a little bit. Even though he clapped back, I mean, Goku still effortlessly remained intact during that fight until Moro revealed that he had more power. But I think with Vegeta, has he surpassed Goku? that i i personally don't think that he has surpassed the power or the speed of ultra instinct but in terms of pure dominance when, when it comes to executing skill and strategy of, of course i don't think that with ui having to be in effect if we had a scenario to where it was ui goku versus vegeta i could definitely see vegeta utilizing some form of techniques or skill set that he was taught by Pybrara that can throw Goku off his game despite Goku being superior, which might be the case here because even if Moro proves to be superior, I think I, I can see Vegeta utilizing something that can really get under his skin that forces Moro to be put in a situation to where his attacks and his strategy isn't working right. on such a person. It's not because he's superior in some sense, but it's the fact that he's working in a different way that counters whatever he, whatever it is that he's doing. A good example of this was momentarily with Roshi and Jiren, right? In the manga. Jiren, Roshi wasn't superior than Jiren, but it was for that moment where he was able to execute a technique or an ability against Jiren that gave him the momentary upper hand of, uh, until, of course, the, you know, the, the, the tides basically shifted. So with Vegeta, has he surpassed Goku? I, in terms of pure skill, ability, techniques, and, and, and you know, uh, I guess you could say skill set, yeah. But in terms of raw, unmitigated, unmeasurable power when it comes down to Vegeta now versus Ultra Instinct, Ultra Instinct is supposed to be something that gods have struggled for so long to learn and just fell flat in trying to achieve. And to have Vegeta learn it on, or surpass that on Yardrat within two months, I mean, it's it's kind of unrealistic in a way. I mean, when it comes down to just being a pure warrior and, and entering a fight with strategy and, and, and abilities, yeah, I would put a Vegeta way above Goku in that sense. But when it comes down to just a sense of power and a sense of determination to see which one can surpass the other, I it's just kind of early to say that Vegeta had surpassed that level of power, especially with Goku training with an angel trainee inside the time chamber for six months. The panel alone, where Moro talks about where he senses Vegeta's power, how how much stronger he's grown. And that's prior to Vegeta powering up. We don't know what he can do yet. We haven't seen him fight. That's not the point. The point is that Moro goes to Earth with Vegeta in mind. He says, he actually resorts and he says, I'm going to stock up to reach the outer limits of my power. Assuming he even has limits, right? But to what he, right. you know, he, he, he consumed planets with Vegeta in mind, not with Goku. Now, obviously, but I'm just, you're stupid because Goku was in the row set, so obviously Moro couldn't sense him. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter at all. What matters is that he went to Earth with Vegeta in mind. And Goku did not expect for Moro to power up at the end of the chapter. That alone, based on, again, until chapter 60 comes out or until we get something where, you know, where we see Vegeta in action, that alone, the fact that Moro was thinking about Vegeta before going to Earth, and the fact that Moro was holding his own against UI Sign Goku. Now, obviously, UI Sign Goku wasn't at full power, but the main point is this. You mentioned uh, his fight with Jiren, Goku's fight with Jiren. 
Right. It's actually stated in the manga while he was fighting with Jiren that Goku, uh, that Jiren was able to start countering uh, Go, uh, um, MUI Goku using sheer his, that his potential is immeasurable, and now right. he was able to counter Goku uh, through sheer determination and willpower alone. He still wasn't like he wasn't jack shit compared to MUI Goku, let alone UI Sign Goku. He actually only tags UI Sign Goku one time in the Terminal Power, as opposed to the end. That's irrelevant. The point is that every time Goku was reacting, even we says it that it was taking a toll on his body, and it's the same thing here. Goku, yes, he was able to stop the energy absorption by blitzing Moral, right? But it still took a toll on his body, the same way it took a toll on his body when he, when he was fighting Jiren. The difference is that he was fighting Jiren at full power. Over here, he was trying to balance stamina and power. And at the end of the chapter, we kind of see that, okay, Goku was telling the truth in the sense where he starts talking about, well, if you were kind of relying, if you were stalling, on uh, stalling for time in order to wait for my, you know, technique to run out, for me to run out of stamina, that means that you aren't confident in fighting me or beating me when I'm at full power. And if I can keep hitting you with everything I've got, then I'll win this. That's true. That is ultimately the truth. And what Goku is saying is 100% the truth. But the fact of the matter is that we don't, we won't know just how strong or how effective full power UI Sign Goku will be up until he fights more, uh, up until his fight continues with more in chapter 60. The point is that Moro had Vegeta in mind when he came to Earth, and he was still able to hold his own against a balance, you know, a power slash stamina balancing UI Sign Goku. That alone, just based on that, you can kind of speculate and assume that, yeah, Vegeta is on that level as we speak. And on top of the fact that, you know, he won't have to rely on speed. Right, because if he can just neg Moro's ability, uh, energy absorption without having to rely on speed, you know what that means? He can conserve stamina, right? That means that no movements are wasted. No stamina is wasted on his movements. So he doesn't have to rely on speed blitzing the guy and running out of uh, stamina, running out of steam when he's fighting Moro. He could just negate it and just focus on the task at hand, and that's literally just to just smash on Moro some more, right? Now, obviously, there are a lot of things that can kind of affect how this fight will go. Obviously, 7-3 is a factor. Maybe Moro, like, has a limit-breaking form the same way Jiren had it, you know, or something like that. Like, it, that tends to be, the that tends to be like, the the thing with villains, kind of like it was with Murder Zamasu, for example, where he just unleashed everything. He didn't care about his body. Goku did the same thing against Jiren when he was uh, Super Saiyan Blue, right? And the Terminal Power before he gets UI, so on and so forth. So, a lot of, there's a lot of factors here that can op ultimately change how this fight will go. But the point is that Vegeta, as we speak, technically, based on statements, based on the fight with Goku and Moro, he's on Goku's level already, and he did it in a shorter amount of time, right? He has more control over himself than Goku does, right? Which means that he can fight without- he can fight on the level of UI, or on, at least on Moro's level, right? It, it, it really- it, it's up to you to, de uh, to decide how you perceive that. But he can fight on Moro's level without having to rely on a form that drains his stamina, right? Because now he has spirit control, so he doesn't have to worry about that. And he can theoretically neg Moro's ability, right? He won't have to waste movements on dodging more because he can fight him head on. So these factors alone, currently as we speak at the time of this discussion, make Vegeta superior to Goku in every single way possible. The only thing that kind of, uh, that factors Goku and Vegeta in in terms of comparison and stuff like that, is that Goku has this uncanny ability to kind of surpass his limits as to where Vegeta does not. Um, he does it, but nowhere near the same way Goku does. Goku got MUI, Vegeta got like this evolution Vegeta, right? In, in the manga, that's what he got, essentially, right? Where his aura was different, and that that only lasted a few panels, and then we never saw it again. <laughs> so, but now it's a different ballgame. Vegeta is actually doing something that he's never done before, which is putting himself under the wing of someone who, he, who he's physically stronger than, and that alone on top of the fact that he already mastered Super Saiyan Blue, on top of the fact that he wants to get stronger than Goku, it's putting him on this road to be better and be stronger than Goku, and he doesn't even know it yet. And I think that's kind of the beauty of what makes them both the different sides of the same coin. Where Goku does one thing, Vegeta does something similar, but he doesn't even notice it yet. So like, it's kind of like I said in the beginning of this video, where Vegeta is probably, you know, uh, his body is more suited to wield Ultra Instinct than, Goku, than Goku's is. He doesn't even know it yet. The only thing holding him back is his actual attitude, that, uh, because he actually thinks before he acts. Like this is this is this is something that Vegeta has always done, and it's kind of it's a callback to when Whis talks about Ultra Instinct. How it, it it probably wouldn't suit Vegeta anyway. How Vegeta's assessment about how it won't suit him is correct. But the irony in that is that he's doing all the right things. He's doing the things that Goku needs to do to establish and to maintain a dominance and a, and a, and a comfortable hold over this technique and he doesn't even realize it yet. So, am I saying that we're gonna see Ultra Instinct Vegeta in the manga because he's on the thumbnail? Absolutely not. 
the reason he's on the thumbnail is because it's to kind of illustrate how Vegeta is basically on that level already, and he doesn't have to he doesn't have the same drawbacks that Goku does. He doesn't have the stamina issue because he has spirit control now. I know I'm kind of repeating myself, but I really want to build a, a big emphasis on these arguments that until we see something in the future, obviously, we won't know how strong Vegeta is. But based on those statements alone, just because Moro was prepping for Vegeta and Moro is holding his own against UI sign Goku, the same Moro that was prepping for Vegeta, that by default puts Vegeta on that level. We don't know which Vegeta. We don't know if it's Super Saiyan God Vegeta that puts him on that level or Super Saiyan Blue. The point is that it puts him on that level by default. And then all Vegeta has to do now is perform on the same level as UI sign without the stamina drawback. And without having to waste movements, without having to rely on dodging everything because he can just focus on Moro and just face him head on. And that's what will trigger everything else that we've discussed on my channel and on your channel, for example, like 7-3 being a factor and all this other junk, right? So that's how I feel about it. I'm pretty sure it's safe to assume to say that Vegeta is ahead of Goku right now. And he doesn't have Ultra Instinct, doesn't need it. You know, he doesn't need it. Um, and he's just, it's insane to think that Goku... It took, he was training with six months, training six months with Maris just to do this. And Vegeta has done something as simple as sit down and learn a couple of tech. Obviously, he wasn't sitting down like Gohan was, right? But in comparison, if you compare Vegeta's actual training to Goku on paper, as a fan, when you're reading it, you think, well, damn, Goku trained harder and look, Vegeta got ahead of him. And obviously people will complain about it. But that's, I mean, Vegeta technically has always trained harder, right? And now he's training smarter, the same way Goku did when he took Gohan on the road set to Master Super Saiyan. He's doing these things now, and he's reaping the benefits of that. This fight is going to give Vegeta the upper hand, but there's going to be some monkey wrench thrown to where it's like, haha, yeah, see, I was saving this the whole time, so I knew that you were going to do this because now I can use this. Yeah. And it's like, crap, okay, Vegeta just had him beat, but now what do we do? You know, it, it's going to be a really interesting scenario, but I just, I mean, for, for now, uh, I want to say that Moro, Mor it's it's interesting because you even brought it up before um, in the fact that Moro hasn't used this full power and neither has Goku. So now we're going to assumingly see them fight at full power just to gauge where they're at. Yeah. That's going to be fun. But then even when, because I think Goku will, when Goku gets beat and Vegeta steps in to like just clean Moro and just mop house, that's going to be, that's going to be something. Because only then would you assume like, okay, wow, Vegeta is able to do what Goku couldn't, but then there's going to be something thrown at the end where Moro's like, you fool. Like, you know, I, I, I had you believe this because I knew and now here's that. So. Yeah, and even if that's the case, guess what? We'll wrap up the video by saying this. Even if that is the case, it still puts Vegeta ahead of Goku. With that, let us know what your thoughts are in the comment section. Thank you guys so much for listening. I know this video was longer than, than most that I've done, uh, but I felt like it's kind of important to kind of establish some of the points over and over again because sometimes you won't listen to it the first one or two times but you'll understand it as the video progresses so the first half of the video is obviously we're going over how Vegeta can surpass Goku the second half I pretty much cover why I think he already has and um, let us know what you think about this in the comment section if you guys are new subscribe I'm assuming you are the channel is fairly new and uh, yeah like the video share it with your friends check out the links in the video description to other video discussions that we've done on my channel as well as Alex's as well as, well as a link to his channel check him out if you guys haven't already all that good YouTube stuff out the way. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for listening. Take care.